Do you want a faster, safer, and more effective antidepressant? Hello, my successful and healthy earthlings. Mihaila Ragushia, naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about a product that may just help you with your depression. And at the end of this episode, we're also going to discuss and give you an opportunity to join our health and success oriented community by clicking below and joining the Natural Health Newsletter. Throughout this episode, I'm going to talk about depression. I'm also going to talk about the gut brain axis, and I'm going to talk about the antidepressant supplement, the secret little supplement that you're here for. And at the end, I'm going to give you three tips to overcome depression. Welcome to the Natural Podcast, where we bring awareness to sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Absolutely love, 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 and appreciate your support. On Mondays, I'm here to provide you a simple, savvy, and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. Let's go straight into it, and let's talk about depression and the gut brain access. I love this topic, absolutely love this topic, and I've done a lot of episodes talking about this topic on the podcast. So if you're interested, tune in to the Natural Health Podcast, and if you want to know about all the episodes coming out, click the bell notification button and subscribe to the podcast. So let's talk a little bit about the gut brain axis. It's really interesting that depression and the gut brain axis is combined together in one episode. You won't hear a lot of people talking about it. You'll hear a lot of people talking about um, just the gut brain axis, but not in combination with depression. So depression has actually been estimated to be the to be the first global burden of disease by 2028. That's in a few years, and that will be a lot of individuals suffering from depression. So if there's anything that I can do to assist individuals who may be suffering from depression or be depressed at the moment, I am going to do whatever it is that I can. And I hope this episode will enlighten you or bring you some ideas of what you're able to do. So the depression has actually been pro- proved with complicated pathogenesis. It's a disease that's inconsistent in response to treatment. It's got a lot of ups and downs and different things are used for treatment. And some, sometimes it works on individuals and sometimes it doesn't. In clinical cases, major depression patients are categorized by persistent low moods and are mainly treated by using selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, also known as SSRIs. So if you have depression or you know someone who has depression, usually they are given SSRIs, which develop based on the monamine deficiency hypothesis of depression. But the question is, is that hypothesis still valid? Because there's so many things that have come out now showing that depression may be more than just a neurotransmitter imbalance. So it it takes about two weeks for SSRIs to act because of the negative feedback regulation of the synapse serotonin levels, because that's what it works on, serotonin. And unfortunately, sometimes it may miss the best intervention time and result in high suicide rates because it does take two weeks to kick in. That's the unfortunate thing about SSRIs. And not only that, in addition to it, if you look at the label, it comes with a number of side effects and everyone experiences these differently. So what I'm trying to get to here is is that there remains an urgent need for a faster, safer, and more effective antidepressant way to overcome depression. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Before we get into it, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to talk about. Let's talk a little bit about the gut brain axis, right? So the microbiota gut brain axis. The occurrence and development of depression are often accompanied by gut microbial changes, which kind of makes sense because I don't know if you've ever been depressed or if you know someone who's depressed, they may have some gut issues. If that's constipation, if that's diarrhea, if that's bloating, if that's reflux, flatulence, burping, stool changes, there's usually some type of gut issues that arise with it. Maybe not all the time, but definitely at certain times of the depression. So what they've actually found is there is actually a reduced abundance of four key microbiotics, probiotics in the gut. Probably won't be able to pronounce them, but I'm definitely going to put them up on the screen. 
Bifidobacterium, Lactobacillus, Lactospirasis, and Phacelobacterium. <laughs> there we go. I tried, right? So, considering that we know the connection between the host neurophilosophical and the gut microbiome, the gut microbiome became a new target for development of novel antidepressant. This is absolutely exciting because we know there is a gut brain connection. So check it out, I did an episode on this if you want to know a little bit more about it. So after you listen to that episode, jump on back here and you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about. So in 2013, so about nine years ago, Siren and Din introduced a new concept called psychobiotics. What an amazing concept. It's defined as a class of probiotics yielding neurobehavioral and psychiatric beneficial functions. Although the main mechanism about how microbes interact with the gut and the brain remains unknown, they actually observe the clinical effect of psychobiotics in treating depression, and this can absolutely not be ignored. So we know there's a gut-brain connection. They found that in depression, there's a reduction of certain microbiota in your gut. So they're like, hmm, why? what if we put these probiotics back into the gut or feed them so they grow, will depression go down? So it, it has brought and seems to continue to lead a uh, huge amount of probiotic approaches in the clean treatment of depression. So let's talk about the antidepressant supplement. What are we talking about exactly, right? So previously, several researchers groups have reviewed the outline and importance of psychobiotics application in treating depression. They also reported that probiotics could reduce the score on the depression scale and it worked more effectively in people under the age of 60. This is really interesting. So what I'm trying to say here or what these research people are trying to say here is that if you're depressed, there's a reduction of certain probiotics in your gut. And therefore, if there is a gut if there is a gut brain axis that interacts with each other so what we're going to do is we're going to find out which probiotics can have an effect on antidepression and antidepressant effect so goh proved that probiotics could elevate mild to moderate depressive symptoms but their effect showed no statistical significance between depressed and healthy individuals the mechanisms of psychobiotics activity in treating psychiatric disorders have been increasingly studied in the preclinical investigation psychobiotics are proved to interact with the host's immune system endocrine system nervous system directly or via altering the gut microbe and these are the ones that they found so Lactobacillus rhamnosus, so that's R-H-A-M-N-O-S-U-S, and also known as JB1, directly regulated the GABA generic system by the vagus nerve dependent way and therefore mitigated the depression anxiety like behaviors in mice. That was found in 2011. The other one is Bibio, Bifidobacterium breve, which is CCFM1025. And has been provided with antidepressant like effect and could stimulate the production of intestinal 5 hydrotryptophan in mice and then regulates the host serotonin metabolism. And that was found in 2020. And the other one is Pediococcus axidilatitis. All right, so it's A C I D I L A C T I C I. And the code for it is CCFM 6432. And they could mitigate the anxiety symptoms in minds by producing lactic acid and inhibiting overproflation of gut pathogen bacteria under stress and that was found last year in 2021. So all of these research studies that are found the evidence points out and suggests the therapeutic potentials of psychobiotics in clinical applications. In this study in particular 15 RCTs were analyzed to assess psychobiotic effects on elevating depression disorders. There, they demonstrated that psycho, psychobiotics treatment could significantly decrease the depression scores of participants with a magnitude and effect superior to placebo. So they took placebo and psychobiotics. Psychobiotics had a larger effect on depression than placebo. So they showed... Um, 
no significant emotional regulation effect on healthy individuals which indicated the prevention effect of probiotics and mood disorders is still conventional so this is kind of saying uh, to take probiotics to prevent depression is still controversial however the probiotics media elevation of depression is also age associated the probiotics only showed antidepressant like effects with participants aged below 60 years of age so if you're under 60 and you already have depression then this may be something that you may want to consider so so it should they should be age dependent so in conclusion this study showed that probiotic intervention can improve the emotional state of depressed patients the probiotic antidepressant like effect is not universal and depends on an administration event, intervention time the number of strains used and the subjects um, psychological status but also the age the present results could provide suggestions of personalized probiotic treatment for clinical patients of depression in the future what an amazing outcome i absolutely love finding stuff like this and as soon as i find that i'm like i have to share it with you i have to share it to the audience of natural podcast because you deserve to know this so next time you're depressed next time you're told to take ssris or you may be on them there may be other things that you can take with them i'm not telling you to get off your medication or stop your ssris i'm not saying that at all what i'm saying is there might be things that could work with it or if you talk to a healthcare professional something that you can change around and adjust in your life so probiotics definitely keep an eye out on the new studies that are going to come out about probiotics because i have a good feeling i have a really good feeling but in the meantime, three tips to overcome depression is look into psychobiotics, in particular the three that I've spoken, which is JB1, CCFM1025, and CCFM6432. Look into them, see if it is something that might help you. Second one is work with a professional to get your own psychobiotics, your own prescribed amount according for you. And number three is always review your gut. What's happening in your gut? Because no matter what probiotics you might put in, it may not be good enough because your gut health is just not working right. So there you have it. I've spoken to you today about depression. I've spoken to you today about the gut microbiomes and psychobiotics, the new treatment that may be used for depression. So if you want a faster, safer, and more effective antidepressant, this may just be the answer for you. But you need to talk to a healthcare professional to ensure that this is right for you. But this is such exciting information, such exciting outcomes, and you need to review it. If you know someone who suffers from depression or has depression or is just interested in your studies, send this episode to them. Share it with them because you might just help someone out. Do what you do best. Love, like, share the Natural Health Podcast. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification button so you're always advised when the next amazing episode comes out and if you want to join the health and success orange community click below and join the natural health newsletter on fridays specials and bonuses dropped into your inbox just like that for you nothing that you have to do no payments that you have to give me nothing you have to give me at all i'm just here to provide you with information so you can achieve optimal health because you deserve optimal health you deserve to know what it feels like to have optimal health there you have it do what you do best love like share the natural health podcast and remember the missing link between failure and success is your health content and information provided here is the opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing or reading this content. And in a circumstances Circumstances shall the natural podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek 
other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the Natural Life podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahayla Raguz nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.